Penn's Peak Radio. We're rocking country collide. It's all about the country right now. And that's right. This uh, this show is nothing but country. Um, back to back, wall to wall. And we've got a great uh, uh, artist that check in with us every once in a while uh, on the show. Um, so excited to have a return artist back on the show. This guy's got some brand new music out there. Looking forward to chatting with him and um, hearing what he's been up to. Uh, Please make welcome to the show, Mr. Nick Nichols, returning to the Wall to Wall Country Show. Hey, Nick, how are you? Hey, Casey, I'm doing great. I hope you are as well. Thanks for having me back on. Oh, yeah, no problem, dude. I always like to make sure that my artists know that they can return, especially if they have new and exciting news. And you've got some new and exciting news uh, going on in your department. But, um, hey, before we get that, Nick, you know, I always like to kind of remind people a little bit about who you are, where you came from, what you've been up to. You've been in the business for a while. Uh, You've also got a a few other uh, uh, branches on the tree, so to speak, of things that you do (laughs) other than, you know, a professional musician, entertainer, songwriter, and a couple other items in there. Can you give us a little background about who Mr. Nick Nichols is and how he got to where he's at right now? Uh, I'd love to hear that story, yeah, Nick. Well, yeah, well, you know, it all started years ago. I started playing piano when I was a kid and then learned, taught myself when I was a, in Clemson University uh, to play guitar. And, uh, you know, the songwriting just started to happen and develop, listening to some great guys like the one you just played, Roger Miller. And, you know, I always try to model myself after great songwriters and, uh, songs that had meaning and said something and uh you know it went from there i went been going back and forth to nashville a lot over the last few years and then finally moved there uh back in 2009 and i now uh, reside there i also have a a second home in south carolina but uh, i do i'm still a professional recruiter i still do that some during the day i play a lot i'm not doing a lot of touring but some limited touring uh really trying to in the last couple of years really been concentrating on the songwriting because that's pretty what pretty much where my heart is i really like songwriting and pitching to the major artists and uh you know it's been a long journey we're getting close we've got a lot of new things that are starting to happen uh since the last time we talked my website is up now and running i've written my first novel so it's pretty cool a lot of good stuff happening well i think that's amazing and you know i like to hear about you know the journey and and uh and, you know, you, you've had, you know, quite the journey. We're excited about what you've got going on. Now, you have some new projects out there. We, we've we had you on before where we talked about um, some of the other projects that you did and, and some of the other great music that uh, I think we had played for you, uh, by you before, um, Better Than I Deserve, I if I remember correctly, was one of them that we had featured back then as well. Um, and and some of the other stuff uh, that you had. Now you've got some new projects out there. Why don't you tell us about some of these new projects that you've been working on? Yeah, well we've got uh, we've got a new artist right now that has got major label uh, interest from four of the major labels in Nashville. I just got one put on hold for her, and uh, we've also got uh, I had four songs recently cut on Nashville artist Roddy McCarran's album, so that's been really great and. Uh, we were actually writing a lot of new material now. Just came out of the studio. As a matter of fact, I actually even went in this past weekend with my uh, church praise band. We cut our first EP nice. as a church praise band, and uh, that was a lot of fun. Most of those guys had never been into in a major national recording studio, so it was their first time. It was a great experience for them. And uh, like I said, I just but last time we talked, I had not. This project was not complete, but it's now complete. I have written. My life story, autobiography of it's called I Am Music, the story based on the song I Am Music. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it walks you through my entire musical journey through faith. And I've gotten a lot of great comments back from it. I've, I've, a lot of people have bought it, and a lot of people like the way it's written, and, and, and just follow, being able to follow someone's story and how certain things happen at incremental, you know, just incremental points of their life to move them to another platform. You know, I believe it's all divine myself, but uh, it's just so cool to be able to share that. Had no idea, had never had even thought about being a novelist, but I was just given a vision to do this, and it happened. <laughs> just another notch in your belt. Oh, I just think I'm going to write a book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just, it, you know, the, the story kind of morphed out of the song because I Am Music is pretty much who I am. Mm-hmm. And I, it just one one night, it just it woke me up. I said, I am music with story. I need to tell my life story. 
it's not a great it's not a story of great fame and worldwide success. I mean, although I've had a lot, I've been blessed to have a lot of success, but it's a story of staying of faith and staying true to what you believe in and following that path and really working hard and never quitting. You know, so many people walk away and give up on their dreams, and, you know, we're all put here for a reason, and the thing to do is to follow that path. Don't ever get off of it. Because I heard years ago, little Jimmy Dickens, somebody asked him on, after a, an interview after the Grand Ole Opry one night, he said, if you had any advice to give to anyone that's pursuing a, a career in this business and their dream, what would you say? He said, three words, never give up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He said, because at the least, the least expected time that you think it will ever happen, it will happen. Mm-hmm. And I've heard so many countless stories that I can share. I think one of the most memorable ones is the great Don Schlitz who wrote The Gambler. Uh, he pitched that song in Nashville for 25 years and nobody wanted it. And then when Kenny Rogers heard it, he didn't even like it. He didn't want to cut it. Wow. But his manager convinced him that this was a hit song. George Jones, another great example. George Jones, the first time that he heard, he stopped loving her today. He said, I can't cut that. Nobody will buy it. It's too sad. Wow. Fortunately, wow. Billy Sherrill had much more, more vision than George did. As an artist, he said, George, you got to cut this, man. This is a hit song. It only became the greatest all-time selling country song ever. Yeah. So, you know, timing is everything. You write a song today and somebody doesn't take it in three weeks or three months and get discouraged and say, well, I thought that was a great song. It, if you feel like it's a great song, it is a great song. And I believe that, I believe that Cream Rises to the Top. It's just timing. It just doesn't come very fast. It comes slowly. And sometimes the right artist, and that right artist may be me. I never know. You know, it may mm-hmm. be somebody else. But I believe that a song, if it, if it's that great and it speaks to that many people, it will find its own way out into the into masses. Yeah. Well, you know, and i got to say, I talked to a lot of artists over the years, and I think one of the things that I think – surprised them and they mentioned to me about their music is they're like you know we're gonna put this album out or we're we're working on some of these songs and you know they thought oh this song is going to be the hit of the album this is this is going to be the cream you know this is going to be the top and sometimes it's they're taken by surprise where that one doesn't you know, maybe do as well as they'd hope, but something else that they just like, you know, I'm not, I'm not really feeling this song. I really don't think it's going to go well, but let's just put it out there anyway. And that's the one that, you know, skyrockets. And I've had several artists come to me and go, I just, I didn't, I didn't not at all expect that song to be the hit that it is, was, whatever. I mean, all the way up to, you know, people like, you know, Randy Travis and Travis Tritt and a couple of those guys are like, yeah, man, the, the, the you know, uh, the, um, uh, I, I, my brain's going to uh, something of the stars. Uh, oh, it turned into like the hugest wedding song ever um, for him. And he, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keeper of the Stars by, keep, by uh, Tracy Bird. Yeah. He, you know, he, yeah. I've spoken to him and he's like, yeah, there's no way in hell I thought that was going to do as good as it did. And it's iconic, <laughs> you know? And he was just like, that was just a song I thought I did because it was a cute, you know, it was nice. It was kind of like, oh. And, you know, he's, and I'm like, you know, that's iconic still to today. People still love that song. Yeah. And he's, he, yeah, t- timeless songs have no age. Yeah, they don't. And, and, you know, well, a lot of today's Nashville music that you hear, and I'm sure you hear it, uh, you know, I, I, I think there's room for everything. I hate that Nashville has pushed the traditional market out the window. You know, George Strait, he's kind of gotten mad because mainstream country won't play him anymore. Right. And, you know, he's an icon in our business. And, you know, it's now all about the drinking and the partying. You know, we, and bro, the, the new words in Nashville are bro country and hip hop. That's what they're looking for. <laughs> I don't even know what those country, mean. <laughs> what that means is rap country. Oh, okay. Basically. It's the loop stuff, you know, and I, it's, it's crazy. One of the songs that you're going to play today, I played it for a major publisher just less than a couple of three months ago. And his reaction, well, this guy's one of these guys that he could pick up the phone and make a phone call, and this song goes on a major label album, albums, on a major label artist album. But he listens to the song, and he says, what a great song. But he follows that by, but it's too emotional for radio. Wow. And I literally froze. I, I thought, when did a song become too emotional for radio? I thought that songs were supposed to touch your heart. Yeah. yeah. But it, they, but the, what the modern trend in country music is, that is no longer the 
thing. I think people, I think the average country music listener, um, and I mean, I could be way off, way off base, Nick, but I talk to a lot of artists, and I think, I don't know who's saying that or why the publishers are saying that or whatever, but I can't talk to you how many times where people really listen to the words of country music and they want something from that song. They want to feel something. Yeah. They want to connect to the words. Right. And right. I, I think they're wrong. I, I think those... You're right, because they are wrong. And, and that's the, the, the problem is that it's not driven by... And I thought that... And I was mistaken. I really thought that this was being driven by the major labels, but it's not. It's being driven by radio. Okay. Mainstream country radio is wanting more of this hip hop, looped up stuff, and, and you know, I don't know. Apparently, that's what you know. The, the it's all focused toward the younger generation, mm -hmm. and the guys like me, and, and you know, people that are more my age and the middle aged guys, they're getting left out because they can't hear the stuff that they're used to hearing on radio anymore. They have to go to internet radio now and hear it mm -hmm. because guys, well, guys like Tracy Bird, you know. How, how, is Tracy getting played on mainstream country radio? Mm -hmm. Tracy Lawrence, even George Strait, you know, mm -hmm. hey, Pretty Dirt Man, great song. Every one of those we play here, I play on my show. I mean, you you have mentioned, uh, you know, about John Conley and some of those guys. Yeah. I mean, they, John's been on my show what th three He's times, you know, yeah. talking yeah. about his He's music and great music. Yeah, great music, and and all these guys, Bill I Anderson. You. Uh, yeah, I saw a recent interview that T.T. Shepard did on yep. the show that I did an interview on, and T.T. said, you know, we said, we we live by the, you know, if it weren't for the internet radio now, we have no market. Yeah. Because yep. we've been we've been stereotyped as old mm -hmm. and, you know, out of date. And that's crazy because yep. their music is timeless. Yeah. I mean, there's, it's, it has no age, and you don't hear those kind of songs today. Yeah, I mean, I, I've had Gene... Somebody. Gene Watson on, you know, a couple of times and gobble stuff, and, and I know my audience gobbles them up. I know they love them. I mean, every time I have some of those guys, everybody's like, oh, that was Gene Watson. You know, I mean, I've had Tanya Tucker, and, oh, yeah. you know, I'm I'm always looking for uh, some of those coming up. But in a couple of weeks, I have the, um, the one guy from uh, Highway 101. Uh, going to be on the show. Cactus uh, Cactus Moser is going to be on the show. Cactus Moser. Yeah. Yep. Cactus is, is a, well, has been one of his producers for years. Yep. And Jimmy, yeah, guys, you know, they're just Jimmy Fortune from the great. Statler Brothers. You know, yeah. it's like I love having those guys on my show. Yeah. So. When's the last time you heard the Statler Brothers spun on mainstream radio? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we tried to do that here for you, Nick. That's for sure. What? Yeah. <laughs> um. What? Uh, now you were talking about this song that. Um, they said is too emotional. Now I know we've we've set that we want to play uh, a couple songs during the interview, and I want to get to one here very shortly, and then one we'll keep at the end of the show. But tell us about uh, this one song that you know I believe you said you wrote or you co-wrote um, that co we're going to play yeah. out there that she don't look like what she's been through. I mean that 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 right. the title yeah. tells a story. You know that's the title. She don't look like what she's been through, and and it's 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 dedicated to women who have lost husbands, some women who have lost husbands and sons to the cause of freedom. We, you know, our country does a lot for our veterans. We always, we have Veterans Day and Memorial Day, and we recognize our veterans. I went to a baseball game last night where we had Military Appreciation Night. But, you know, there are people that, the, the forgotten heroes, the ones that, that waited behind for the loved ones that didn't come home or came home in a, in a pine box. And, you know, what are we doing for those? You know, those people should be recognized. We thought that we should sh show that there's some compassion for the spouses that are left behind. Mm -hmm. And I never hear it talked about. And we had a chance, Amy and I had a chance to do this song live at a writer's night downtown Nashville uh, a couple of months ago. We did it out for the first time. And when we walked off stage, there was a guy at the back of the, back of the room that stopped me with tears in his eyes. And he said, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. He said, I've never heard anybody pay homage to the women who suffer for, because of the men that are lost. Mm -hmm. hmm. And I thought this song did exactly what it was supposed to do. But that was the song that I was told was too emotional for radio. But see, that's that's crap, crap. you know. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is, you know. But uh, everybody who's heard the song just absolutely loves it, and I can't tell you how many people have come up and said, you know, it makes me, you know, 
I just think about my husband, and I'm just so thankful that somebody re- even thinks about the people that have been left behind, you know? Right, right. You have to go on and keep living. Yeah, I mean, and I'm sure you can apply it to, you know, the the, the children and the parents and, and the husbands who've lost wives, you know? I mean, you just yeah. just those people who are left behind, who are left suffering in the dark, so to speak, because... That's right. You know, and, and you know, they're the ones who have probably have the hardest job of all, is to keep going. Get get back up, put your boots back on, and and try to keep going, and, and try to keep get, find some normalcy in life again. And it's nice that there's exactly. a little spotlight on those people, because I'm, I'm, there's got to be, you know, people who need... You know, just just like those that do come back ha- need somebody to talk to. Those people, there's got to be organizations out there to help them figure out how to yeah. take that next step. Yeah, it's 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 tough, and you know, we just we we had this idea, and and, and it just I don't know, it just it just kind of happened, and it was just beautiful. It was a beautiful thing once we had it written, and then you know, the exciting part is getting into the studio and cutting it, and getting all the instrumentation done, and all the parts and the harmonies and and hearing that thing across those speakers for the first time, my producer said, my God, this is a hit song. I said, well, you know, if, if you feel that strong about it, that means it's got to be great. Mm-hmm. It's got to have merit to it. So, you know, we're, we're very hopeful. We just had it pitched to a couple of folks. But, uh, you know, you think about it, two, two of the greatest songs in modern country music that have been just smash hits, one was by Miranda Lambert, The House That Built Me. The mm-hmm. other was by Carrie Underwood, Jesus Take the Wheel. Both highly, highly emotional songs yep. went straight to the top of the charts, but yet Nashville says it's too emotional for radio. Yeah, I don't know what they're smoking. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said that, not me. <laughs> I don't know what they're smoking. Because I can honestly I tell you, it. people want to connect to songs. That's the whole point. I mean, granted, there are some of those, you know, shake your tush and dancing around the campfire kind of songs. I get that. I mean, there's there's a market for that, too. You know, you you raise the old solo cup and, you know, you're just out having a good time and driving down the road and tapping your toe and all that. I get that. I get that. Sometimes you need that to escape yeah. from the sadness or the emotional shit. And you just you just want to be like, I just want a happy song, you know. Yeah, and and exactly. there there's a place for that. There's totally a place for that. I mean, there's sometimes you just yeah, want to put on mindless music. Too. But at yeah. the on the other side of the coin, Nick, you know, you and I are is saying, and not to beat a dead horse, but there is that side where people need something to connect to and not feel like they're going through something all by themselves. And people turn to music. That's what they do. That's what they do. That's, that's exactly right. And you got to have a little something for everybody. And I'm, I'm like you. Yeah, I think there's room for both. Sure. I hate that the, that, the, that the other has been just completely shut out of, of the music business, and at least the mainstream music business. You have to go to the, the smaller stations or the Internet stations or Cumulus or Sirius mm-hmm. to get it, and, you know, you just can't get it on mainstream country anymore because it's all about, the, you know, it's, it's a lot of it that I listen to, it's, it's like we're looking for off rhymes or we're looking for a lot of internal rhymes. It means they basically want 93 words in a line. Right. They want 93 words. You know, something they can say so fast that nobody understands what they say. Yeah. It all rhymes. And for me, that's not the foundation of country music. Country music is one of the places I like to go to where I can actually hear the words of the song. (laughs) Exactly. You can hear what they're saying. A lot of the the vocalists are so truly these days that I can't even understand what they're saying. Yeah. If they were saying it in in half of that amount of words that they're using. Yeah. The other thing that just kills my soul is that the steel guitar and the fiddle have been taken out of Nashville completely. Wow. You will not hear a major country station play a a new Billboard's quote-unquote hit song and find a steel steel or fiddle. If you find a... If you find a fiddle in there, it's probably hanked, hanked up and it sounds like some kind of electric guitar, and you won't hear steel. Mm-hmm. I mean, rarely do you hear steel. I remember making a long drive not long ago, of about eight hours down to Florida, and I believe it took me seven hours before I heard a steel guitar song. Hmm. It's amazing. Well, why don't we give that song a listen, Nick? Uh, she Don't Look Like What She's Been Through, the song that you and Amy put together, and uh, let our listening audience decide, because they're the ones that actually buy the music. So uh, exactly. the heck yeah. with those big people. Let's uh, let's give it a listen, shall we? we got to take a quick break. Can you hang in there for just a little bit yet, Nick? Sure will. All right. Well, we're going to take a, a break and pay some bills, and we're going to get to Nick's tune. I want you guys to give it a good listen. 
and uh, let it pull on those heartstrings. Let it bring a little tear to your eye. It's okay to have that happen when you're listening to a great tune. We're going to be back with more Nick Nichols and his tune, She Don't Look Like What She's Been uh, Through, plus some more of his music uh, right after we take a quick break. We're playing uh, the best of the country music industry on board a guy that's kind of been around the block once or twice, and I'm saying that in the most loving way, Nick. <laughs> Um, exactly right. Uh, you know, you know your stuff. You, you, you know, you've defined your art. You, you get songs out there that mean something to people. And I got to tell you, I really like the song too. I really think it's something that needs to be out there. It's a message that those people do need to hear. And no matter who that person is, whether it is the wife or the son or the uncle or the grandma, it, you know, those people do need to be recognized and, and understand that they're the ones that might need a little help and they are the hero behind the hero in, in, in essence, you know what I mean? And I think the song is uh, yeah. is is definitely something that needs to be out there and people need to hear it and they need to be touched by it. So congratulations. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, Amy and Ty Clark and I felt really great about the song when we finished it and every, the response to it has been overwhelming in the live shows and uh, you know, people say, wow, Never, never looked at it that at that. You know, it almost causes people to pause because they think, "Wow, I never thought about it that way." Right, right. Kind of interesting. And it, and it's you know, and it's a thing that you know, it's it's not something that people need to be embarrassed about or feel bad about. It's just like, holy crap, you know, you do focus so. Life. You know, you do focus so much on the heroes, and yeah, they they deserve that focus. They absolutely do. Those people who, you know, give up everything in life to protect this country and sometimes they yeah. give up the most important thing which is it which is their life you know but there's so many other you know people around them i mean and you find that in a lot of you know in industry too you know you've got the artist that's on the stage and they're the ones kind of taking the credit but you got to remember that there's a truck crew that goes along with those guys the the guys that are up all night setting up the stages and making the lights are just right they're on unsung heroes too you know you, you can kind of look at it in a life perspective you got the person who might be in the limelight, but there's always, 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 always m m at least one person, if not multiple people, underneath, in the background, in the dark, whatever, that really, really helps that person be who they are and what they are, and, and they need that recognition, too. I mean, it's just it's just a given. That's true. That's exactly true. Everything you said is exactly true. And we hope to accomplish that through this song and, and, and you know, the unsung hero that, that, that sometimes is forgotten. Right, right. Well, we hope that that does that for you. Now, Nick, is this song actually out there? Can people that are like, oh, I like the song. Now, how do I get my hands on it? How do I how do I track it down? Um, yeah, how do they do that? Right now, available on my website. At okay. KNichols.com. Okay. Okay. Uh, and it's not been formally cut by a major label artist, so it is on my website if people like it. And there's also a YouTube video highlighting the song that is on my YouTube channel, so you can find it on YouTube. Oh, great. Oh, perfect. I, I was going to ask you if there was, uh, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, a, a YouTube for, uh, video for that. Nick, uh, say that again. You said it a little fast just in case people missed it. What's the, what's the website that they can find it at? It's just simply J.K. Nichols, N-I-C-H-O-L-S dot com. All right. And on that their home page. What's that? That is my home page, and there are several different tabs you can go to. There's a store. There's a music yeah. page where there's a lot of individual singles listed, and that's where they'll find it. Yeah, okay. I'm looking at it now. And, and it also shows all of the, the ways that people can reach out to you as well, your right. Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram, um, and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and, of course, you know, your press and and um, if, they're, if they're interested in where you are performing your music, that if they want to come and, and see you and things along that line. So that's a, that's a right. great place. It's, it's jknichols.com guys uh, yeah that's that's some place that they can they can find you and 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 is that now is there the video for this on your website as well you, there's actually a, a link on the website that will take you to my youtube channel okay okay and that's where they can find the video for that yeah you can find all my videos there on the youtube channel right perfect 
Awesome. Awesome. Now, you were talking about some, uh, uh, you know, the project and you've got some other things going out there. Obviously, that one, uh, excited about that one being out there, touching people's lives and in and, and making a difference in someone, understanding that they're, they've not been forgotten and things like that. You also have some other great tunes out there. Another one that I believe you did do with Amy that we wanted to feature two years and a lifetime away. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, it's actually it's actually two miles in a lifetime away, and it's it's, oh. it's kind of funny how that one came up. Amy was uh, working at a salon, and she at the time, and she got a call from one of her, I guess, one of the customers that said, "I'm on my way. I know I'm late, but I'm two miles in a lifetime away." <laughs> and we were riding that night, and she brought. She said, "This lady called today, and she was running late, and she said she said the greatest and coolest thing." And this is the thing we songwriters do. We hang on everything everybody says because you never know when somebody's going to just t- casually toss a great hook line around, you know? So Amy said, two miles in a lifetime away, and I thought, wow, what a hook line because what a story of we could build from this. And I started thinking, I said, what about a man and a, a guy and a girl They grew up in a very small town? You know, they were sweethearts. They didn't marry. For, for whatever reason, we leave that to the imagination of the believer, of, of the listener. What, who knows why they did? I mean, life happens. Anything could, could 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 get in between that. But they wind up marrying different people, and they literally live two miles from each other, and and they never see each other. Mm-hmm. They're two miles, but a lifetime away. Right. And it's right. just the, the the context of the song and the story just. It just, it just, it makes you, it just renders your heart to think, wow, what if, you know? Yeah. What if? Yeah. The, I... the, the, you know, there's a, there's a line, the bridge in the line in the song goes, um, you know, we both have someone who think who thinks we hung the moon. Could it be brighter? Well, we'll never know the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're two miles in a lifetime away. Um, I, I think, and, and I could be wrong on this, I believe it was... Was it, it might have been Reba McIntyre. I don't know. I'm racking my brain here. There was a song, something about, um, it's the same kind of thing, looking for love. Is it the person in the elevator that I ride to work with every day? Um, is it yeah. is it the person who gives me my coffee at the coffee shop every morning? You know, it's, it's a story of missed love. Like, you know, missed as in, mm-hmm. like, I missed the opportunity. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, it seems like yours kind of has that same feel. It's like missed opportunity, um, you know, speak up, say something, um, just go out on a limb, step outside the comfort zone, you know, do what you need to do. And, yeah. and you never know what might come from that a little bit. I think people lock themselves in these boxes sometimes way too much by just staring at their phone and, and Facebook. They forget what's going on around them. And and you forget yeah. to have a conversation with people. Sometimes you're sitting in a you're sitting in a restaurant. You look around the restaurant. Hardly anybody's having a conversation with the person that they're sitting across the table from because everybody's on their phones. Know. You know, everybody's on an iPhone. Exactly, exactly. And and these two were set up so that you know they actually knew each other. I mean, they dated. They 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 were high school or they were school sweethearts. They obviously were very much in love. And something went awry. Right. Nobody knows what. We don't. We don't. We don't let them. We don't leave. We don't give that to the to the listener. We let them imagine what happened. Cell phone. And you know, <laughs> but but yet he never. Yeah, it could be or 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 so. You know, maybe she met someone. Maybe he met someone. Maybe. Yeah. You know, they're they're happy with what they have, but you know, are they really happy with what they have? You yeah. know, Obviously, he's thinking about it. I mean, it's coming from his perspective it could actually be done by either a guy or girl we uh-huh. kept it open so that it, it could actually amy and i actually do it as a duet okay on stage yeah so it's kind of cool because it comes from both perspectives and uh but this is the male perspective this one just got pitched to george Strait. oh nice so we're hopeful we're oh hopeful. wow that guy looks good in jeans anywhere <laughs> Yeah, he's uh, he's a man. I tell you what, I, I have one. I have there there. I have select CDs in my car, and they are Eagles, John Denver, and a couple of other artists like Jackson Brown. Guy, you know, Rodney, great writers. And there's then there's George Strait. Mm-hmm, of course, because I know that George is going to give me what I want to hear: traditional country. Right. Right. Every collection should have a George Strait CD. <laughs> Everybody should have a George Strait. He, that should be a law. A great song. I think some of his greatest songs are the songs that never made radio. He's got a song that I absolutely love that was an old Red Lane song called uh, uh, 
something about going back to Tulsa. It was, uh, uh, let's see, what was it? I'm trying to think of the name of it now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tell Me Something Bad About Tulsa. Mm-hmm. Just an old killer song that, you know, tell me how those old and smell in the wind tell me something bad about Texas so I don't have to go back believing I belong there again because of her mm-hmm. killer song. Yeah. Just heart-wrenching. Nice. The first time I heard it, I was just, it was like, you know, I was wrecked the car. I'm thinking, oh, my God, this is so good. Oh, this is so good. All right. Yeah, well, speaking of good songs, Nick, I think uh, I think we want to play your tune, um, Two Miles and a Lifetime Away. If you want to go ahead and uh, introduce your song, I think uh, if you can hang in there for a few more minutes, we're going to get this song out there for our listening audience. Great. This is, uh, this is Nick Nichols, and uh, you're going to be listening to my new song, Two Miles and a Lifetime Away. On wall to wall country with Casey Parker on Ben Speak Radio. There's another good one by Mr. Nick Nichols. Amy Chenoweth is also on that. And uh, another good tune. I really like it. Two Miles and a Lifetime Away. Another one of those that I really, really think people can relate to, Nick. I mean, they're going to, you know, put that into their own lives. They can do that. Yep, I think so too. I think, you know, so many people are like that. They're always wondering what if. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. what if what if what if I had married her or what if I had married him would it be really would that moon be any brighter? You know, yeah. you have you wonder about that, you yeah. know. Some people live a lifetime of regret. Some people just move on. Yeah. Well, you've definitely got I mean, and I think one of the things that you have that some artists don't, good, bad or indifferent, you know, um, some artists are just singers. You know, that's what they do. They can put on a performance. They sing songs. They perform on stage. And they can connect to the people that way. I think one of the things that sets some artists, including a lot of these classic artists that we've been talking about, um, set them apart is th- they're the whole package. They're, you know, they're the whole yeah. package. They're the ones that come up with the idea. They put the words to paper. They put the music to the words. They can perform it. Uh, they tell the story, um, you know, and I think that they, they play instruments. You know, they can they understand music in, in its rawest forms. Um, and, I, and I think that's one of the things that really sets certain artists apart from the guy who's just standing on stage with a microphone in his mouth. Not that that's by good, bad, or indifferent. I'm not beating anybody up. I'm just saying that I, there's, there's levels of, uh, of uh, professionalism. And, you know, I think you're really right. sitting there checking off all the boxes, Nick. And I really, really hope these <laughs> tunes get somewhere for you. Well, we're, we're hopeful. We're, you know, we're always... Um... You know, I, I, I was talking with one of my uh, publishers today, and he said, you know, you may I think you've already written that song that's going to change everything. I said, well, possibly, and possibly we've yet to write it. You never know. I'm always thinking about that next song right? Uh, as to what's going on. But, you know, sometimes it's amazing where hook lines come from. They come out of nowhere almost. Just, just They just, sometimes you're not even in the mood to write a song, and all of a sudden you, you're, you're written three. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. I love it. That's awesome. Well, Nick, I, I, I don't want to hold you up too much longer, and I want to wish you well and know that, you know, the doors to PPR is open open if you're ever up here in Pennsylvania. You know, you, you'd be more than welcome to swing in. Um, but before we let you go, two quick things. One, uh, this show, of course, as you remember, is recorded and it's aired back on a Sunday, and I always like to um, just throw out one more tune of an artist to remind people to listen in on Sunday if they missed the interview. We talked about a song uh, that you want me to air at the end. You want to give us a quick uh, scenario of what people are going to be listening to in, in a couple of hours of this last song by Nick Nichols? Yeah, this song is called uh, My Last Breath Here, and it was written in memory of country artist Joey Speak who lost her battle to cancer last March. Uh, it's a, it's just amazing. I mean, after she, I had always been a huge Joey and Rory fan. Yeah. And uh, after she after she passed away, um, you know, I just uh, I, I I just felt this compelling desire or, or call to write a song in her memory, and it was a, and it was taken from something. Actually, I was reading an article that that Rory had written, and he said that you know she took her last breath here and her first one in heaven, and so the title was. The title was written, My Last Breath Here. Mm-hmm. And I put, used some, some footage, I uh, got permission from the family, used some footage for, uh, of, of some uh, uh, of pictures, actually not film, film, but actually pictures that were on, you know, public domain. And uh, actually uh, just um, 
put it out there to see what if anybody would would bite on it, see what they thought about it, and people have gone crazy over it. It went from having no views to ten thousand in one night, and uh, now it's well on its way to a million views. And nice. the response that I have gotten from this uh, has been overwhelming, to say the to say the, to say the least. It has been. I have gotten stories, Casey, from people that it's not even related to Joey and Rory. It's related to uh, something that happened in their lifetime. You know, that they, one woman, God bless her, she sent me an email the other day, a message on YouTube. Under the, the messages, there must be a thousand comments on the YouTube video, that she said, uh, I only have two months to live. And she said, I was kind of really doubting, you know, really worried about my faith. And she said, this has restored my faith. Had another guy that sent me a message that said that he had been doubting his faith and he heard this song and now he wants to use it as his first dance for his daughter's wedding. Oh, Just crazy. I mean, you know, the, the song is just so, it has touched so many lives and every dime of it that we sell goes to the Joey Fink Memorial Fund. So every time somebody downloads that song, every time we get 50 downloads, I send $50 to the Joey Fink Memorial Fund. To wow. Him. Defer the expenses from the cancer stuff because I know you know I don't care how much money you got you know how well you've done in life cancer is a devastating illness yeah both mentally physically spiritually and financially right 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 absolutely well that's good to know so if people want to download this again they're going to go to your website is that uh, the best place right. to find it that's where it's located it's on my website at jknichols dot com slash music. Mm-hmm. And there's also, I also have a ton of requests for an instrument track. People are singing this in church. They want to buy the instrument track to do it in church and do it at different places. So they're actually downloading the instrument track. I put it on there as well. It's just a backing track. Okay. All right. And uh, they can find it, actually, if they look at the music, it's number seven, track number seven. Um, yeah. And, and, and uh, it's it's just been crazy. It's, it's, the response has been overwhelming. I mean, I'm, I'm literally getting now almost five to 10,000 views a night on this thing. All right, so people should also find you on Facebook and uh, all the social medias and, and check this song yeah, out. Can. Twitter, Instagram, yep, all we're, places, we're everywhere. Well, we're going <laughs> to... We're going to play that. It's called My Last Breath Here, Joey's song, at the end of the show to remind people to listen. And again, I'll mention about that donation to uh, the Joni Feek Foundation to, to, to... to help raise some money there for you know awareness and research and trying to do something to tackle that that horrible disease that does affect a lot of people so we'll we'll make yeah, sure we mention yeah, that sure um joey uh finding you on the social medias your website um always 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 a pleasure and honor uh to speak to you uh mr sir and uh, you know what you're always welcome <laughs> back nick thank you i appreciate you any any time so having me uh, anytime, you're always welcome back, sir. Any last words you want to throw out there to the listening audience uh, before I cut you loose? Well, I just really appreciate you having me on. I appreciate everybody listening to the music. I hope you'll continue. People will continue to follow me and follow what we're doing. Uh, we're, we're, you know, just keep us in your prayers for for doing God's will. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do what God has put me on this earth to do, and that's to write songs and, and hopefully help somebody with a word. All right. Well, I think you're well on your way, sir. And uh, I appreciate your time. We'll get that song out there. We'll remind people about that tune and that uh, nice uh, paying it forward, so to speak, uh, thing that you're doing for the for the family and the research foundation. But uh, uh, hey, take care of yourself, sir. And let me know when you got something new going on. I'll do, Casey. Thanks for having me on again. Uh, Great to be back on Penn Speak Radio. Thanks, Nick. Have a good one, buddy. You too. Bye-bye. Bye.